Hello again. So this is the last one of these walkthroughs, I think. Um, I'm going to do commits four and five all in one. Um, you'll see why in a bit. And I'm also going to pad them out in between as well um, with a little bit of extra, um, a little Easter egg. Um, so I'll explain that as I go along as well. Um, just to, if you've jumped in at this one, there are three previous to this. Um, it's the um, bowling game catter in Visual Studio 2019 and C Sharp. Um, and uh, yeah, start at number one, really, if you've not seen any of them. Um, what I'll also say is um, since the last one I did, I've had a massive crisis of confidence um, about the, the Karate Kid. And in the last video, I was talking about how... Um, how Mr. Miyagi's fence was immaculate, but Ralph Macchio had to paint it anyway, and his car was all shiny. I, I don't, I can't remember whether that's actually what happens in the film. Maybe the fence was in a real mess, and you know, Mr. Miyagi got a free, better fence uh, for all that karate training, which kind of seems fair. At the end of the day, I haven't watched the film since about 1984, and I it, always thought it was a bit bobbins anyway. Everybody's got a mullet, you know, um, but. Yeah. Um, what on earth am I talking about? OK, let's start. Um, so um, we're going to start with uh, a test for a strike. Now, this is the other piece of bowling functionality that we're missing. Um, so the sharp eyed amongst you will have noticed that in the last couple of videos, I've been doing this um, in order to make some test code appear. And it's, that's not working anymore. So that's the extra thing I'm going to show you in the middle. So rather irritatingly, I'm going to have to actually type now. Um, it's going to be more irritating for you than me because I'm terrible at typing. So you're going to have to watch it. OK. Um, and we're going to call this one test one strike. So a strike is one of them ones where you get your 10 pins put down and then with one mighty bowl, you knock all 10 of them down. And it's never going to happen, is it? But um, so anyway, I need then to do roll 10, effectively. Um, then the rule with the strike is you get the same double points bonus for your next two rolls. So let's do two more rolls. Um, one of three and one of four. And then, oops, 40. <laughs> And then, and then normal service will now be resumed um, and I'll roll only 16 zeros in this case. I've been, it's been 17 for all other ones where there have been three. Of course, I knocked all 10 down with one. So that knocks one off the overall total of rolls that you can roll. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so what's that going to score? Um, so you got 10 points for your strike. And then three points for your next one, but that's double. So that would be six. And then four points for your next one, but that's double. That would be eight. So 10 plus six plus eight is 24. 24 points for three rolls. Marvellous. Like I say, never happen. Oops. Wrong. Oh, oh. right. Okay, there we are. Um, I've been naughty again as well and I've not run all my tests at the start so you know it's all do as you say do as I say not as I do with me isn't it really um okay so hopefully all the ones it doesn't really matter in this example but you know always run the test when you start in the morning because it will keep you saner for longer <laughs> okay um so yes that one's broken and that will be because um, we're only getting 17 for it because there's no strike logic yet. So we need to go put that in. OK. Um, so because, um, again, it's a strike, we're going to want to put it in the. Um, we're going to want to put it in the um, score code. Um, and it's a similar sort of thing to a spare. You're in a world where um, if you. If you get a roll of 10 just in one roll, then you apply some bonus. So um, the bonus you would apply is um, score plus equals um, oh hang on 10 the 10 points for the roll 
plus oops oh god I wish I could type I really do um, um, and that's roll index plus one um, plus rolls uh, roll index plus two because that's but basically you're getting the bonus of the next two um, so that's the actual bonus that you would apply um, also another thing that happens when there's a strike um, is that you then move straight onto the next frame um, um, but the way that the scores are added is that that roll is just made the next roll so effectively what you'd have to do is when a strike occurs just move the frame index on one <laughs> um, because the next frame starts with the next roll because you knocked all 10 pins over so we need to uh, um, and I can't remember whether I said roll index or frame index there um, in the example it's called frame index so I'm going to change it back it's actually interesting because it's possibly indicates a flaw in this particular design which is that you've got this situation where um, the size of a frame can actually change depending upon whether you roll a strike or not so is this is this tracking the individual rolls or is it tracking the frames it sort of does a little bit of both again that's a bit of a smell so but as discussed in a bit of depth beforehand we're not really here to review this code this isn't about writing better code really it's about red green refactor and learning how to use visual studio to do it with c sharp so um so i'm, I'm going to call it frame index because it just moves it back to the example that's on my github but it could be called either and at which point mm, is it the best way of doing this well i don't really mind i'm not writing a bowling game really i'm not working for jeff lebowski as discussed before so um, but I'm going to rename it frame index anyway. There we go. Okay, so now it's more consistent. Uh, and I just want to plus plus that really. Because uh, there we go. Red squiggly goes away. I'll wake up in a minute. Okay, um, so that's the logic of what we want to do. But of course, we need to do that if there's a if there's a um, spare a strike rolled. So um, usual thing. There's my code K control K control S um, and I can surround it with an if not that if though that if um, and um, rolls if rolls frame index so the current roll if you like equals equals 10 then we've written then we've then we've rolled a strike Okay. Um, now the thing to remember here, of course, is that um, down here we've got frame index plus equals two. So that having that consistent logic outside of the if statement worked, but now we've got some different logic, as I say, because maybe the design's a little bit ropey. <laughs> um, um, that's within that if statement. So now we've got a bit of a logic mess. <laughs> so we need to just be more consistent and put that in those two like there and there and then it will actually move us through the frames more consistently um, when a strike occurs or when a, a non-strike occurs um, that i think well let's have a look does that make our test pass oh yes it does there we go so it can cope with the strike however we've still got some mess going on as before so um, we've got this for example that's yeah you know you can kind of work out what's going on but it would be better if um, we extracted a method and we called that um, strike bonus you could call it calculate strike bonus really because it's a method so it's doing something that would probably be better so bad uncle Bob name your methods better um, um, we've got a similar kind of thing going on down here as well actually um, where um, well, actually we've got on there as well that's the spare bonus well 
let's be logically consistent then and call that one spare bonus. Or even spare bombness. Let's just make some words up. Um, um, and then that's just calculating a normal sum of balls in the frame. So um, let's call that. So again, I'm doing control and full stop to get this context menu up where I extract the method. So um, again, go watch the old videos. They go on and on about it in those. Um, so that's called sum of balls in frame. Balls in frame. There we go. Um, I've just done loads of stuff. I should have been checking whether or not that's broken any tests or not. Oh, lucky me, it didn't. OK, um, and then um, we've also got this little bunny here. So it says is spare there, uh, whereas that's just some logic. To, so that becomes oop, is strike. There we go. So, I mean, we're not really like taking particularly complicated logic out of this by doing that. But actually what we're doing is introducing the language and the logic of bowling to the code. So when we come back to this later, you know, the code's got words like strike and spare and, you know, bowling type concepts in it, which we can then map back to the operations that are providing those bits of functionality. So um, which just makes the code more understandable, which is the whole point. Um, and hopefully it doesn't break it either. I'll run all the tests and find out. There we go. Um, so speaking of the tests, there's a little tiny little bit of refactoring that we can do um, in the actual test code as well. Same sort of thing as before. So we've got game.roll equals 10. Well, that's a special thing. That's a spare. So let's extract that method and just call it roll spare. There we go. Oh, no, it's not a spare. It's a strike. <laughs> I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm a bowling expert. OK. Um, and let's commit that. So tests, uh, no, adds test one strike or something, just to remind me where I was when I do it. Control enter, you can commit things with as well. There we go. Nice and quick. OK, so that's that bit. Um, but as I say, I'm just going to add a little aside here. So the next thing we would do is add another test and it's the perfect game test. And that's the fifth commit. But as as I've kind of mentioned on several occasions before, um, I've added this little shortcut in that you'll have seen me use on previous things where I type nut for end unit test press tab twice oh it's not working anymore so obviously I had to do something to Visual Studio to get that to work so I thought I'd go through um, what that thing is so um, what that thing is is adding a adding a um, custom code snippet as it's called to Visual Studio so it's a basically a little piece of configuration which you load into Visual Studio and um, and that gives you a little uh, the opportunity to put a little code template together which you can get Visual Studio to then write for you on demand. Um, so um, as with all things that are a bit noughties and 2010s it involves an XML file. So let's um, just do a new file. There we go. Um, and somewhere in this long list that it's taking ages to generate, there's an XML file. OK. Um, and before I go any further, let's save it. Um, and I'm just going to put it somewhere, um, not in the actual repo. I'll just put it in my source directory like that, and then I can come back and get it. Um, and I'm going to call it n unit n unit that's better test dot snippet is the name for these i think i'm going to have to not snip a snippet i'm going to need to set that to all files as well otherwise it will call it dot snippet dot xml and then it will break and nothing will work okay so um there's my snippet code um it's not particularly exciting yet is it um and it's not going to work like that obviously so um, this is the uh, mother load of information on how to write snippets on Microsoft's own website. You know, Visual Studio's their tool, so obviously that's where it is. Um, so I'll put the link to this below the video. 
But the key thing um, that you need really is the template for a code snippet. So I'm just going to, well, in fact, let's just do that because they've given us that function. So let's use it. There we go. You could type all that in if you really wanted, but I'm going to, obviously, life's too short. OK, um, so it's the n unit test. Um, and then there's a few other things that you can add to this, which it will pick up because it's got the schema in there. So it goes off and finds out what I'm allowed to put in. Um, uh, let's put a description in. So um, generates blank uh, n unit test. Um, now, in theory, if you get really into this, you'll write millions of these. So it is worth putting all this metadata in so that you can uh, come back to it again. Let's do, um, or you can find it again. Um, uh, let's call uh, Dr. Shaky Dave Gerard. There we are. Gerard. Uh, what else is in there that I could put in? Oh, shortcut. Now, this is really important. This is the thing that you're going to type in um in order to actually get the template to appear in your code so you know without this pretty useless so um the one i was using before was not because for n unit test also because it's funny <laughs> you know the pu more puerile the better <laughs> um so i think that'll do in there for the time being there's probably a few other bits i could put in but important thing to not to miss out <laughs> if you miss this out it doesn't work so and then you'll be sat there scratching your head going why is it not working so um, the the page, I believe, has a whole list of the languages somewhere. Maybe oh, there's C sharp, but I think it I think it mentions the the names of the languages that you have to put in there. Or maybe they just sort of oh for C sharp use VB and CPP for C plus plus. Or to see all the available languages, browse the code element attributes section on that. Okay, so if you yeah um, you you'll see in a bit what kind of options there might be. Um, OK, so here's where the magic happens. So you've got a C data section. Um, again, if you were alive in the noughties and had to do loads of XML, you'll understand. This basically means that everything that goes in here is effectively um, commented out to an extent that, you know, characters that mean something in XML don't get read as XML. So um, which is good because the very first thing you need to put in is some square brackets like that <laughs> within some square brackets just for the test attribute. You're effectively writing a template for an end unit test at this point. So it would be public void. Um, now, here's an interesting thing. I'm going to put what they call a literal in and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to put um, test name could be whatever you like, testy McTest face, whatever you feel like doing. Um, if you if you want to be treated seriously throughout your career, then you know. <coughs> okay, um, and then I like I've been putting the simplest assertion in really, but I like to do a failing one um, because tests should generally fail first before you get them to pass. Hence the red part of red green refactor. So, uh, oh. Assert R is not going to work. Assert R equal would work. OK, so that's the code that I want to appear when I type nut and press um, tab twice. Um, but I want to do something with this test name as well. Um, so I do something down here, declarations. And in my declarations, I want to declare a literal and that has an ID. And that ID matches what you've put within those two within those two dollar signs. And uh, I'm going to give that a default as well. And again, you probably that's where you'd put. Go on then, testy muck test face. There we are. <laughs> Um think there's tooltip stuff you can do as well. Why not? I'm not sure what function does either. I'm sure there's loads of even more nifty, excellent things you can do in here that developers at Microsoft slaved long and hard over. So, you know, do them a favor and learn how to use them. Um, OK, uh, type not to write a blank 
end unit test. <laughs> okay, let's see what gives with this. Um, I'm bound to have done something wrong, so bear with me, but uh, I think that's about right. So now you've got this, you go to tools and code snippets manager, um, and then uh, you've got a set of drop downs there as to which language to use. Um, C sharp's obviously one of what the one I want to use and I want to because it's a custom one of my own put it in this my code snippets folder so I can manage my own one separately so you click this import button um, then you go looking for wherever it was you saved it which hopefully I'll be able to remember it would be in there and there and um, uh, to do it was source wasn't it I put it there there we go and well it can find it that's a good start yeah, OK, I think that means it's parsed it OK, because it's saying it can put it in there. So we finish that. OK, that. So let's go back to my bowling games test. Not. Hey, there we go. Magic. Um, and just to f completely round off that part. Um, yeah, so that's then saved it in your... Visual Studio 2019 folder, which is actually in uh, your documents folder is the default location for that. I've put that in a different location documents because I've got two hard disks and I don't want my C drive to fill up too much. Um, so I wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't actually have put the XML file that I created this blah, blah, blah. You don't want to know all this stuff. It's fine. OK. Yeah. So here's my new test. Um, and this is where I want to start the final. Uh, the final commit. So this is going to be test perfect game. Oh, it's such a perfect game. There we go. So in a perfect game, you roll 12 strikes. So that's your 10 frames. Strike, 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 blah, blah, blah. And then you've done a strike in the last one. So that means you get your two bonus rolls and you do two strikes for those ones as well. So that would be 30 for the first nine frames. Um, so 270 and then another 30 for your final frame. So um, so just to get that um, logic into my test, I can just use roll many again. And it's 12 rolls of 10. And that should give me Oh, I've just overwritten that assert that I put in my template. That was daft, wasn't it? Dot R equal 300 for my perfect game. Game dot score. There we are. Look at that. Green lights abound. So my logic of my game code is so robust now that it works for a perfect game. And that's kind of the last test case I need, really. In theory, I could go through and do a kind of full game where, you know, you roll six in the first frame and four in the second one, and then you get a spare and blah, blah, blah. Um, and so maybe I ought to do that. If I was, if this was banking code, where I was going to get sacked if it went wrong, then I probably would do a little bit more testing around the fringes like that. But you know, as I say, I'm not, I'm not doing this for Jeff Lebowski. It doesn't matter. So that's the end of the cata. That's it. So to sum up, you don't do this because you're writing bowling software. You do it because it's an exercise. It's teaching you red green refactor. Um, you write all the tests first. You don't take your hands off the keyboard unless you really, really have to. Um, if you want to speed it up, you can write a snippet. Um, and um, it, most importantly, with the third part, the gnarly bit, where you go wrong a few times, follow the exercise, go wrong a few times, get used to going wrong, get used to bouncing in and out of the red and back into the green again, and maybe commenting things out here and there when things get a bit tough. And, you know, having to go through and refactor things. Um, the key thing to remember, though, is to try and keep that forward momentum. So you've got um, points where, yes, you were commenting the latest test out, but you never commented any of the previous ones out. You just 
use those as your kind of yardstick to work out whether your new logic was likely to work. The first question is, has it broken any of the old stuff? Um, there was that one occasion where it did do that. So the first thing was, let's take the new test out of the out of the equation. And then what do we do to keep the logic moving forward, but make sure the old stuff still works? So it's stuff like that, really. Um, and, you know, the cat is great. It's uh, bowling is a really, really good example for it. Um, yeah. OK, so that, I believe, is that. Have fun, everybody. I might do some more of these videos one day. Who knows? Or not. Tatty bye.